My guest says we've been sharing our wants and needs with machines for 72 years. So how do you design for authentic response? I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Adam Cutler, IBM Distinguished Designer. Welcome, Adam. Hi. So how do you come about appointment as a distinguished designer at IBM and what type of responsibilities come with that role? So it, it's generally centered on what you've contributed in a meaningful way to uh, the contributions to design as a whole, also as, uh, as it's related to what it is that you do for IBM. And it's a, a series of sustained activity and, uh, and accomplishments that you can point back to uh, with hard evidence to be able to show what you've done and how you've been able to help the company as it is through design. Um, the appointment is not an easy one. It's uh, maybe one of the hardest things I've been through uh, in my design career. Um, but I'm extremely proud to be one of the first three. And uh, it's a corporate appointment. and uh, when we're given the corporate appointment, you're also given a matching mission. And mine happened to be figure out what it means to design for artificial intelligence, full stop. So it's up to and including Watson, but also what does it mean to design in general for artificial intelligence? And I've been uh, chasing the meaning of that for the past two and a half years. So then how does IBM approach design for artificial intelligence? Well, I'm still figuring that out. Um, it's completely different, but also related to um, traditional design. I think traditional design places the user at the center, trying to understand what problems they have and how design can help to solve for those problems. Uh, and then we go about uh, what has now become sort of a tried and true process around coming up with an idea and mapping it out somehow, whether it's with wireframes or sketches or some combination of both of those. And then working with developers to bring that into the world as a mobile app or a website. And because artificial intelligence works completely different, it's about learning how to plan for what you are going to teach a machine to eventually learn and then how to apply that learning in solving a real problem. And what I found is that while there are some similarities, at least in terms of how one of these ideas may make it to the glass or to a smart speaker or something like that, the planning and the understanding process is almost wholly different because it's not about how it ends uh, aligning boxes on a grid or what JavaScript framework you're going to use, but it's really about what is it that you're going to teach, where are you going to get the data, and how are you going to understand what you can do with the available data to teach the machine to bring you something that is above and beyond the reach of pure human intelligence. I've heard you say and refer to going from leaving a, transa a transactional shift and, and moving into an era of relationships. How do you design for a relationship? This is also something I've been working on, but um, I started by looking at how did I meet my best friend? And it was sort of an innocuous, um, you know, general college moment where we met within the first week or so. And I think he uh, jumped off a wall and flattened me and said something about, I have cable TV, let's hang out. Um, and the reality is, is that that is how I met my best friend, but it isn't how we became friends. And I started doing some research and I found um, some work done by Professor Mark Knapp. Uh, and it turns out he's here in, uh, in Austin at the University of Texas. And he has this, um, model for the escalation of uh, relationships and how relationships form and how they come apart. And as I was reading about that, I was also thinking about how we talk about what artificial intelligence is from our point of view, and that is a machine that has the capability of understanding, learning, reasoning, and interacting. And the more I thought about it, I was like, well, those are the real building blocks of why we form relationships in the first place. If we can understand each other, well, we're off to a good start. And if I can teach you something and you can learn from me, there's a reason to come back. And if we can reason about that, it means that you have something to add to it. And if we are willing to interact, these are the things that keep us coming back for why we want to spend time with one another. And so I thought, well, if a machine now has the basic building blocks to form its end of a relationship with a human, it's no longer about putting something into a text box and hitting the submit button and waiting for a return trip to the server. 
it's about what can we do with one another to help the human be the best version of themselves. And that's really the relationship that I want to focus on when it comes to how do uh, humans and machines form this lasting relationship. What are the challenges in getting past an initial interaction relationship? And why aren't we getting any further in the design and the development? Well, as much as all the different marketing machines around would have you believe artificial intelligence is not easy to work with. Um, it is in some respects like um, parenting a toddler that you have to teach. And just because you've taught it something doesn't mean that it understands right away and that it has to puzzle its way through what it is that you're trying to teach it. In some cases, I've seen it in just some of my experiments that um, it seems to be understanding what it is that you're trying to teach it. And then you come back the next day and somehow it's lost a step. It's not getting what you were explaining to it. And then uh, it'll write itself a couple days later. And, and uh, right now that, that process isn't entirely transparent, which bothers me a little bit. I want to be able to understand without a doubt how it arrives uh, at its answers or its reasoning. Um, and this is something that we've been addressing with our ethics work as well. Um, but I think mostly it's because people haven't figured out um, how they want the answers to manifest, meaning um, a machine can reason through a problem. And yet what it returns back is something like a confidence score and perhaps a passage of text that goes with it. But it's only capable of doing that so far. If it's going to be conversational, it's generally because a human has written the dialogue and that the artificial intelligence is uh, routing that dialogue intentionally back from the machine. So it can't really go off script because all it knows is the script. And this is something that we were super excited about with um, Project Debater out of IBM Research, where it happens to be in debate format, but it is formulating its own responses in a four-minute debate response. And that that is something to me which is highly encouraging, is that it's simply going through the corpus of what it knows, and it puts its own argument together at the end of it without having human writers involved, which to me, that's, that is, um, this is a turning point for the way that we can start looking at how AI can communicate back with us. We've been sharing our wants and needs with machines for 72 years. Those are your words. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this is about to change? Well, we're predisposed in that uh, we have this thing called the pathetic fallacy. It's, it's the reason why we name our cars. Uh, it's the reason why we beg and plead with some piece of technology to give us five more minutes on a battery or please don't crash because I forgot to save. Um, we as human beings are willing to, and uh, even more than willing, we uh, sort of default to wanting to project personality onto anything. and. Here and now, this is the first time where the potential for the machine to respond back in a way that is authentic and believable is something that we can now start associating more than just the personification or the anthropomorphizing of, of an object and actually begin to have that two-way conversation with it. I think that's really what's going to change here. Compassion, warmth, desire, understanding, a machine can a machine learn these human traits? I mean, can we teach a machine to engage in human-like relationships? I think we can teach a machine these things, but it, it's the facade of uh, compassion or warmth. Um, a machine is incapable of feeling emotion. And as a result, a machine can't desire something or want something because desire and want stem from an emotional place too. It's that you you have a desire for something more than something else. You want that. It, it's, a, it's something that appeases our limbic system, you know, up here in our wetware. A machine doesn't have that. It doesn't have that intrinsic motivation to say, like, I want to make the user happy. Um, I mean, we can teach it that, but it doesn't understand it itself. So when I say it's the facade of understanding or the facade of a relationship, it's that we're willing to go along with a well-written chatbot because it feels right. But when there's additional intelligence behind a dialogue like that, and that it does give the appearance of caring or concern or wanting to be helpful, like I was saying before with the pathetic fallacy, we're willing to go there without any feedback. That when it's able to articulate itself back to us, we can invest that much more into it. And so it's really about our comfortability 
forming the relationship versus it doesn't necessarily care one way or the other. It, it doesn't have emotions. Adam Cutler, IBM Distinguished Designer, Designing AI for Relationships. Thanks so much for joining us. If you, if somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work, how can they do that? They can reach out on Twitter. It's uh, Adam underscore Cutler, or you can reach me on LinkedIn as well. Sounds good. Thanks again, Adam. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.